The enterprise technology space is moving towards the cloud at an unprecedented pace, but there's a dark side of cloud computing that we need to be aware of. What exactly is the dark side of cloud technology? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys, including digital strategy, software selection, and implementation. And when we're working with clients and we're helping clients through their digital transformation, it's almost a foregone conclusion that the technologies they deploy are going to be cloud-based systems. Most ERP vendors and enterprise technology vendors are moving to the cloud if they haven't already started there. And a lot of times we fail to recognize the risks of cloud systems. So what I want to do today is expose and talk about the dark side of cloud systems, the things that might create some sort of a backlash in the future, and something that may not necessarily kill cloud ERP technologies, but it will certainly expose some of the risks and costs and deficiencies of cloud systems. Before we dive too far into today's content, I want to invite you to learn a little bit more about Third Stage Consulting, who we are and what we do. I've included a link to a video right here that describes Third Stage in a bit more detail. It talks about our story, our history, our philosophy, our clients, our service offerings, and that sort of thing. But in general, what Third Stage Consulting does is we're an independent and tech agnostic consulting provider. We help clients through their entire digital transformation life cycles, beginning with digital strategy, software evaluation and selection, all the way through and including implementation planning, implementation readiness, and the actual implementation itself. We're technology agnostic, so we only represent our clients' best interests. We do not represent software vendors. But having said that, we work very closely with software vendors all the leading players that you can imagine we've worked with both in helping clients evaluate and select them, but also in helping clients implement those solutions as well. So we have a very broad objective agnostic view of the market that is meant to really represent your interest as you go through your digital transformation. I also encourage you to scan this QR code right here to get access to our resource center. This resource center has a ton of information, a ton of eBooks that are free. You have access to top 10 software rankings, playbooks for how to make your project more successful guides to change management, YouTube videos, all kinds of stuff that are going to help you through your digital transformation. So I encourage you to scan this QR code to get access to those resources. And please feel free to reach out to me directly to brainstorm ideas about your project. Even if it's just informally, you want to bounce around some ideas and get some informal advice, I'd be happy to spend some time with you. So feel free to reach out to me. I've included my contact information below. You can also find it in the description field of this video as well. So first, let's talk about what the advantages of cloud systems are. And this is something that I think we're all pretty familiar with. We know what some of the upside potential is of cloud systems. We don't have to maintain our internal systems and infrastructure. We don't have to hire as much staff to maintain that infrastructure. Some of the short-term costs might actually be cheaper for cloud systems because you don't have to make those big capital investments in new on-premise technology. And there's also constant upgrades and constant evolution of this technology to make sure that you're staying up to date with the current technologies. And then there's the whole side of analytics and artificial intelligence. With the emergence of these new technologies, we find that cloud systems are oftentimes better suited to support AI capabilities and data analytics capabilities, because now you have all your data in a central location that feeds into AI and analytics and some of the other capabilities that organizations have struggled to adapt, partially because they had fragmented siloed on-premise systems. So these are just a few of the advantages of why organizations are moving towards cloud systems. And it's also important to recognize that even though there's value for organizations implementing technologies in the cloud, the real winners are the software vendors themselves. They make considerably more and materially more money off cloud subscriptions than they were ever making from on-prem systems. The investors of software vendors love it because it's recurring revenue that's very predictable, high margin and steady. So for that reason, vendors are pushing extremely hard to move to the cloud, regardless of the pros and cons of what the impact is to customers. But having said all that, there is definite advantage to cloud systems. But what I want to do in the rest of this video is talk about what is the downside, what's the risk, and what's the dark side of cloud systems. Not necessarily to suggest that cloud systems will completely go away, but to suggest that there is a dark side that you need to be aware of as you continue through your digital transformation journey. So the first downside that's important to be aware of is the fact that oftentimes cloud technologies offer less flexibility than what you might have had with your on-premise systems. 
when you have your on-premise systems, you own that software. It's in your four walls. You're hosting it in your servers and your infrastructure. So you can do whatever you want with that technology. You can configure it how you want. You can customize it how you want. You can bolt on other applications however you want. And there's really no limitation to what you can do to the software. And this could be a good or bad thing, depending on how far you go with customization and flexibility. But oftentimes what organizations find is if there's a bit of a culture shock when they move to a cloud-based system, especially if it's a multi-tenant software as a service type of solution where there's even less flexibility. But when you move to the cloud, because the whole premise of the cloud technology concept is that you're providing technology at scale to many organizations, that means that there's inherently less flexibility than if you had your own version, your own instance of the software that allowed you to do whatever you want. So it's important to recognize that there's limitations on flexibility. For some organizations, that's a good thing because they're trying to standardize operations and standardize business processes. But for most organizations, I'd say it is a culture shock and it's a difficult transition, especially if you're not used to operating in a cloud environment. So something to be aware of, something to plan for, and something to recognize that you'll have to invest more in organizational change management to get your team to adapt to cloud technologies. One of the biggest potential disadvantages of cloud technologies is that longer term, the costs are going to be higher than your on-premise systems in most cases. And the reason I say that is because on one hand, you're saving money in the short term because you don't have to make that big capital investment up front with cloud solutions. Instead, you have a lower annual cost, subscription cost that's ongoing. And over time, usually five to seven years out is where that sort of break even happens. And suddenly after five or seven years, cloud systems tend to cost more than on-premise systems. Now, you could argue that you're getting more value out of cloud systems because you're getting more modern technologies, more capabilities, and potentially a higher ROI. But the fact of the matter is that your costs are likely to be higher in the long term when you factor in the total cost of ownership of those ongoing subscription costs that go into perpetuity. And guess what? Those subscription costs don't ever go away and they don't ever decrease. So the only thing they're going to do is go up from the time you first deploy cloud technologies. And not only that, but many cloud contracts have no limitations on how much a vendor can increase cloud costs and cloud subscription costs. So while the ROI may be there and it may be justifiable in terms of those rising costs, it's important to recognize that you're not going to save money longer term, despite what most cloud vendors will try to convince you of. The other thing to be aware of with cloud systems is that there's a certain lack of maturity that comes with many of the cloud systems in the marketplace. Now, I will say that there's a caveat here. This statement in this whole segment of this video does not apply to the native cloud systems, systems like NetSuite, Salesforce, and Workday, for example. Those are three enterprise technologies that were born in the cloud, they were built for the cloud, and they've always been in the cloud for 20 plus years. So those systems are fairly mature and well-established in the cloud. But if you set aside those established software solutions and you look at some of the legacy on-premise vendors like SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, Epicor, Infor, et cetera, what you find is that those systems are complete rewrites to the cloud. So in other words, all those capabilities that had been developed over decades of R&D and investments in the product now are suddenly overnight trying to move those same capabilities into a rewritten version of a cloud solution. And that just doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take years for a lot of these on-premise legacy vendors to move all of those capabilities over to the cloud. But having said that, there's a lot of capabilities that they've already built for the cloud that far exceed and surpass what they might have had with their on-premise version. So it's sort of a double-edged sword. You're getting some new capabilities with the cloud solutions. But in many cases, when you look at things like advanced manufacturing or advanced planning, advanced budgeting, things of that nature... A lot of times software vendors don't have that extended capability built for the cloud yet, or if they do, it's very simplified and not quite as robust as what they had before. So just be aware that there's a lack of maturity that comes with a lot of these systems in the marketplace. Doesn't mean you shouldn't move to the cloud necessarily, but it does mean you have to figure out what you're going to do to address those gaps and those risks in your transformation. Now, in addition to increasing costs over time, I would say the other biggest factor to consider as a potential downside and a potential day of reckoning for cloud systems in the future is the whole idea of, of vendor lock-in. So you have this concept where now all of a sudden, if you have all of your enterprise technologies and processes stored with one vendor in the cloud, suddenly that vendor has you locked in. It's a lot more difficult to move to another system. In other words, the switching costs are very high with the cloud compared to on-premise. 
And for software vendors, this is a dream. This is exactly what they want. They want you to be locked in. They want you to go all in on their solution and invest more of your IT spend with them for longer term. So it's a good thing for software vendors. But the question becomes, what happens over time, let's just say 10 or 15 years from now, when you deploy all these cloud technologies, especially if it's enterprise-wide, and then you find that for some reason your business changes and evolves a certain direction and the software changes and evolves in a different direction that may or may not meet the needs of your organization. So this is all very important to recognize and understand, and there's ways to hedge for this. One way to hedge is if you're going to move to the cloud, perhaps you don't put all your eggs in one basket and you deploy multiple cloud technologies. Not only would you get better capabilities potentially by having more of a best of breed approach, but now suddenly you don't have that vendor lock in where your entire enterprise is exposed to the risk of having one vendor manage all of your systems, all of your data, and a lot of your IT spend. So just be aware of the whole concept of vendor lock in, and there's a lot of ways you can hedge and diversify your risk, but you just want to be aware of it. So these are some of the things that lead me to believe that we may see a dark underbelly of cloud systems in the future, in the not too distant future. It may also create somewhat of a severe backlash against cloud systems. We have yet to see, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the cloud. Do you think the cloud is here to stay? Do you think there's a dark side? Do you think there'll be a backlash at some point in the future? I know this is a very controversial topic that runs counter to what most industry pundits will say, so I'd love to hear your feedback as well. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. But there's a dark side of cloud computing that we also didn't, ooh. ooh. Investors love it. The investors, let me say that again. But when you move to the cloud, because cloud, nope, that doesn't make sense. Because, and guess what? Those, subscri those subscription, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And there's something else I was going to say, and now I forgot. What was that? The enterprise technology space is moving towards cloud. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right. You can change my inflection yes. with AI and.